use headphones for best experience. I will just uh, quickly show you that you can find my content, some of my content, on audio streaming platforms as well. Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music. Uh, if you want to listen, audio only. So, as you can see, there are quite a lot of albums here. Today, I'm going to continue showing you this iPad. Because I wanted to show you a playlist that I have created and I named it Sleep Relax. This is on Spotify but you can also find it on my YouTube channel as a YouTube playlist. And here I have collected a lot of songs that I use for when I want to fall asleep. Then I put my iPad in my case like this. I won't see the light from the screen and then I have the headphones. And um, I listen to some music. I really, really like to listen to some music when I want to fall asleep or just relax. And also maybe when I'm working. But it's tricky to find music that I that I find relaxing actually. Um quite picky and <laughs> sensitive about what I can listen to. So that's why I got the idea to create this playlist and also to share it with you. Um and when I listen to it I have the volume really low. Almost like yeah, on this iPad it would be like this two squares, I think, between two and three squares, so a very low volume, because some of the songs are, are can be a bit like energetic or loud, but if you listen to them very quietly, I can find it very relaxing, because um, um, when, if I would like Google relaxing music, meditation, deep relaxation music. It's that type of music that you usually find then. It's not the music that I'm really looking for. It's not uh, suitable for me. Uh, often it's like background uh, very sweeping sounds from synthesizers and very high notes, uh, high pitch instruments like it could be the pan flute, you know, very typical. Uh, for relaxing music. Uh, also very high note piano music. Someone playing piano or flute. Uh, and I'm a bit sensitive to that. Uh, I can't uh, really sleep to that uh, type of music. So I'm looking for more ambient, repetitive um, music. More in a low lower notes, low register, not so much vocal music, I prefer uh, instrumental music. Some voices can be okay, but most voices I find annoying in this case. And uh, I like beats, I like when it's um, like monotonous, rep uh, repetitious, um, and um, yeah, so then I got the idea to like collect songs that I really 
really find can be good for this purpose and I would like to share it with you and talk a bit about the artists who are creating this music so check out this playlist on Spotify or YouTube so the first songs here are from Stubberman uh, I discovered Stubberman not so long ago and I was really happy that I found this artist and this album because it was perfect for me and uh, at this point it's it's the best music I, I really like to listen to this it's the one I prefer when I want to sleep so that's why I put it on the in the beginning of the list so who is stubborn man? I had no idea but I think I found this music uh, after hearing or listening to a remix that he had done for another artist that I found also really good and um, stubborn man is uh, the alter ego of Pascal Gabriel a composer and producer Belgian born uh, based in London and Paris now. And he's been active since um, 1988 or something, time around that. And he'd been mixing and producing a lot of sample heavy dance floor artists since the 1980s. But wh a while ago, in 2018, he developed a solo project. Uh, where he returned to his electronic and ambient roots. And these songs were released on the indie label Crammed Dish and uh, resulted in the album um, Mountains and Plains. And these tracks are from Mountains and Plains. I think I have maybe omitted one or two of them that I found a bit up uh, for some reason bit annoying or too energetic or something or too treble some sound maybe was too treble so it's almost the entire album here uh, Moonstone Beach, Griffith Park, Abiquiu, Badland Trains, Longwood, Taos, Twilight, Mesa Snow, Great River Road, Peachy Wolf and also I found some EP um, that he had released, 4AM Conversation and Skyland Drive. And um, I really hope he will continue to release music because this is the only album he has released so far and I really can't wait to hear more of this music. Next uh, tracks here are from La Leon Vinehall. By the way, I will put links to to these playlists on Spotify and uh, YouTube in the description below, so you can find it, of course. Um, on Spotify, you also can find it if you type in ASMR, ASMR and you will find my ac account there. And then you will probably be able to see my this playlist as well. And uh, also, if you have suggestions of music that you might think uh, I would like, I would be so grateful if you if you told me um, what music you like. Or yeah, uh, it would be really nice to to hear your thoughts about it. What types of music you find interesting or relaxing and what you might think uh, would fit into this list so yeah drop a comment and I would be so glad to read your comments about this uh, Leon Weinhold is um, someone I found I think when I listened to Stubberman I got these uh, suggestions um, some of them I really found it relaxing. He's a British artist and producer and DJ who released his debut EP in 2014. Um, it's 
ambient um, music, electronic music, using is using synthesizers, piano, drum. Um, also in this one, it uh, when you hear it for the first time, maybe you don't think of it as a relaxing music. It's quite like a lot of noises and sounds, it's like uh, sample background sounds. It sounds like white noise or uh, I mean ambient sounds from different environments. Um, but I found it, uh, yeah, on the low, on the low volume, I, find, I can find it really relaxing. Mm. So, his first album was released in 2018, Nothing Is Still, it was called, and these tracks are from this album. It was released on the UK indie, al indie label Ninja Tuned. So, Julia, footnote 4, movements, chapter 3, birds on the tarmac, footnote 3. Yeah, you can see the tracks here. And then we have an album by the American ambient music duo um, Stars on the Lid. I found out about this album when I was searching um, around the internet for, yeah, like best uh, albums for sleep, and I found some lists. 50 best albums for to help you fall asleep or something. There I found some great albums, but most of them actually I didn't really found would be suitable for me to sleep. But this one actually, this one was the best I think, and I really like this one. I had never heard about about them before. Um, Adam Wiltsey and Brian McBride, they formed this music duo in uh, 1993. And they are incorporating droning, effects treated guitars, piano, strings and horns. So it's really like a orchestral landscape they create. So it's uh, minimalist, uh, it's electronic. It's um, yeah, also this distant guitars, I guess. And uh, this album and their and their refinement of the decline was released in two thousand and seven. It's a long album. I think it was like a double album. Mm, and really good. It was my favorite until I found Stubborn Man. Even if you're never awake, is one title. The evil that never arrived, another title. Another ballad for heavy leads. Yeah. Then next, on this list, Songs from an album. Uh, by the way, I think I omitted some one or two of the stars of the lead track, but almost this, the entire album was really good for to me to help me sleep. Next is uh, Tracy Thorne. Um, musician from England. She is uh, one a part of the music to. Uh, everything but the girl. Uh, maybe yeah, uh, she's known both for solo career and for the band. Every, everything but the girl. Her her music band together with Ben Watts. Um, they actually met uh, when they were studying students in Kingston Upon Hull in Yorkshire, in England, and uh, they were both. Um, signed to as a solo artists to the same label Cherry Red Records by this time, early 1980s so before 
Everything But The Girl released their first album or song. Um, she made a solo solo album or mini album called A Distant Shore in 1982. And I found this album quite recently. I had listened to Everything But The Girl's music for quite some time. And I like it, both their older music and their more recent released music. They actually came back after a long break. Um, this, yeah, in 2022 or 2023, this winter. Um, releasing more. It, now they do more like club dance, uh, dance um, music. Or beats. Uh, but it's, it's, of course, uh, it's melodies and lyrics, like just like the old songs. But then it was more, especially Tracy Thorne's solo album here is based on basically just her voice and a guitar. She's playing guitar. It's very plain, very not simple, but um, yeah, it's just it's very direct. Just just uh, her, the lyrics and the guitar, and her voice is quite deep, which I like. Um, it gives to the sound uh, landscape, it gives like more close to the guitar sound, like here, instead of having high pitch song up here. Um, I, that's exactly how I want it to be when I listen to something to fall asleep. To have a lot of sounds here, quite deep. So it's like blending. So it's like a blending together um, in a very nice way, I think. Um, so I think I have all the songs except one here that I thought was not really good for making my phone sleep. Small Town Girl, Simply Couldn't Care, Seascape Dreamy, Plain Sailing, New Open Eyes, Too Happy. Uh, everything but the girls' uh, music has been described somewhere as sophistopop with jazz influences. And I also added, included two early Everything But The Girl songs here that I also like. Night and Day and On My Mind. From yeah, around the same time, early 1980s. So I think this... Uh, solo album, debut album from Tracy Th Thorn is not super well known. I hadn't heard about it before I did some research about her work. Next I have added four songs from Laurie Anderson. Big Science, O oh Superman, Let X Equal X and It Tango. Laurie Anderson is an American avant-garde artist, composer, musician, film director. And she did a lot of performance art. Mm. A lot of performance art projects in New York during the 1970s. But then she also started to do pop music and other multimedia projects. She was a pioneer in electronic music and invented several devices that she has used in her recordings and performance art shows as well. And um, I found out about this song here, Oh Superman, um, not too long ago, only a couple of months ago. I was on Instagram scrolling and um, just uh, happened to see a uh, reel. Someone had made an animation to the intro of this song, and I had never heard this song before. And they were like animated faces, identical faces, like a choir, moving uh, their mouths or like singing uh, in in the synchronized. And they were like a choir singing 
repetitive sound like ha 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 and then like, on top of that was a was a Laurie Anderson's voice and I really had to check what what is this I watch it over and over again I was very fascinated by this and then I started to read about the song and I watched the whole song and uh, this was a song of a Superman that um, she released in 1981 uh, and it was a surprise hit in the UK it reached number two on the UK UK singles chart and it uh, it helped her to become well known outside the art world as well and I guess it was a surprise for many that it, it became such a hit because it's a very arty song it's eight minutes long so yeah, they had to press more records when it became. Uh, it reached number two on the on the chart, and uh, it has been described like this: this this song, uh, it's overlaid on a sparse background of two alternating chords, and that's the, the thing that I like when it's just two alternating chords. It's very repetitive. It's very um, monotonous. And um, uh, these chords are formed by the repeated spoken syllable ha. So ha 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 ha. And uh, this was created by looping uh, with an even tied harmonizer. And also a vocoder was used uh, for a Greek chorus effect. The Greek chorus is uh, like an effect. Uh, used in ancient Greek plays where a group of performers were commenting with a collective voice say the exact same thing at the same time um, so they were commenting on the dramatic action in the play so mm, she's more like talking uh, than than singing in, in this song but yeah I found it super super fascinating and relaxing uh, it's eight minutes long and when I watch it uh, uh, or listen to it. I usually several times. I have I'm asleep after the eight minutes are over. So it's very very effective for me to fall asleep. Actually, this song I can highly recommend it. And it's also super interesting to read the comments to this song on YouTube uh, because you can see that it has had a huge impact on many people actually uh, they're telling their stories about how they found out about this song what it has meant to them during their life so I also picked uh, three other songs from her debut album because this single made her uh, release a debut album the year the, the following year in 1982 the album Big Science um, big, uh, so I just picked uh, some songs I found relaxing. Uh, next is a collection of songs from a German record label, label called ACT, or A-C-T, with big letters, I think, A-C-T. Uh, they are releasing a lot of jazz music modern jazz music a lot of Scandinavian artists uh, but also from other countries um, and um, so this is our more like a collection of songs from this label that I found really relaxing um, there was a time when I was searching for especially the this, t this type of music and I selected songs that, that I found relaxing could help me to sleep to fall asleep um, so I will not go through all the artists but you can see a lot of artists are are coming back on more tracks than one it's, uh, for example Lars Danielsson is a Swedish jazz bassist He's been active since the 1980s and uh, he really 
based on other albums with the Lars Danielsson quartet, for example. Um, Iro Rantala, a Finnish jazz pianist, active since 1990. And uh, this song is called Tears for Espion, that he recorded, I guess, sometime after 2008, because Yes, Björn Svensson was a very famous Swedish jazz uh, pianist who tragically died in an accident in 2008. So this is his, um, this is Iro Rontala's composition for him. And then, um, what do we have more here? Danielsson um, Wolfgang Hafner, for example, is a German jazz drummer active since mid 1980s. Um, Helge Lien Trio. Helge Lien is a Norwegian jazz pianist. Here's a song by Espion, Espion Svensson Trio, Espion Svensson I mentioned before, who died in 2008, Swedish pianist, Vince Mendoza, American composer and music arranger and conductor, active since 1989. So this is more like jazz symphonic symphonic music but orchestra. There should be some tracks with Ulf Bakenius also the the um, Swedish jazz guitarist. Can you see Ulf Bakenius? I thought I had included some. Here, John Jan Lundgren of McKinney's. Bing on Jansson. Yeah. He, I think he's on a lot of tracks also. On this label. More from Ira Rantala. More from Ulf McKinney's here. Wolfgang Hafner. Jaron Herman, another Nils Wilke. Tonbruket. Um, that's a group, um, crossover band uh, founded in 2009, formed by Don Berglund, bassist. Uh, he's playing a lot of folk music, pop rock, jazz, fusion. Johan Lindström, guitarist. Martin Hederos, piano, accordion. Violin, uh, Andreas uh, Veldin, drums and percussion. So they created a band, which a crossover band with like folk music, pop, jazz. And I included two songs that I found very relaxing to listen to. And then there are a lot of tracks with um, Brian Eno. And uh, Brian Eno, Eno is a um, British musician, composer, record producer, and also visual artist. And uh, he's known for his style of ambient music, but also rock, pop, electronica. And he started actually in a glam rock group, Roxy Music. Uh, where he played the synthesizer, uh, started there in 1971. But then later in the 1970s he um, started to explore a minimalistic direction um, and released uh, this, uh, the first album in this uh, series of albums that he called Ambient. 
And the first one was Ambient One, music for Airport, released in 1978. And he was actually the one who was coining the term ambient music. And um, defined it as a genre of uh, music intended to induce calm and space to think. And um, he was layering tape loops, and these loops were designed to be continuously looped as a sound installation. So it was more like maybe an art project in the beginning. And this work has been ranked the greatest ambient album of all time. But actually these tracks are from ambient 3 and ambient 4. Here you can see the four tracks from ambient 1. They are just called one, one, two, one, one, two, and two, two. And then uh, the second uh, album in this series uh, was a, uh, he was the producer, and the artist was actually someone called Laraji. Laraji was an American multi instrumentalist specializing in piano. And this, uh, this album is called um, uh, Ambient... Ah, oh, this was Ambient 3, okay. Ambient 2... Yeah. Ambient 3 was released in 1980. And um, here they are called... The tracks are called The Dance, 1, 2, 3, and Meditation, 1 and 2. I omitted uh, the dance, number one, because I found it a bit too energetic. I used to have it on the playlist, but every time, um, maybe I had been falling asleep, and then this uh, dance track did uh, wake me up. So I took it away. Uh, the dance number two is also a bit energetic, but I think it's better, and I kind of like it, even though it's energetic, it's also the... It's fast, but it's also like repetitive and on a low volume. I think you could be really, really enjoy listening to it. Um, I think these are from Ambient 2, The Plateau of Mirror, collaboration with um, Harold Budd, a minimalist composer the US and Poe is also a poet so all these tracks are from that album and then these tracks are from the fourth album from 1982 the last album in this series uh, ambient series from Brian Eno And these are also really good. Um, sometimes I start the playlist here. That's why this playlist is so long. It's like several, several hours. Um, two, uh, 300 songs, more than 300 songs. So you can start where, or wherever you want. Sometimes I start here, maybe. The Brian Eno tracks. Or after the Brian Eno th tracks, I can also start sometimes. Um, here I have a collection of tracks that I don't know so much about these artists. I just found these tracks as a recommendation tracks when I was listening to something else. I think when I was listening to Stubberman. Or Stubberman Radio, perhaps. Um, I found uh, similar music or yeah, music in styles related to Stubberman's music. But uh, yeah, friend uh, King Vulture from Kando Do Three, uh, friend you will never learn from Forrest's works. Per Rotta Rotta Rotten List from Borgen and their Club of Gore. Redding Do Stand. Original motion picture soundtrack from Francois Roubaix. 
Yumizu Tera from Matthew Holzall and the Gondwana Orchestra. One from Rocks and Waves Song Circle. This includes some vocals, um, but I uh, kind of like those vocals. Perdonare, perdonare from Alessandro Cortini. So this is a total mix of songs from different countries and different artists. Then there are some tracks from Zola Jesus, uh, who I found out about very recently, also as a recommended artist. Actually, I think I was searching for a playlist, or I found a playlist called Songs to Test Your Headphones With. I think that was the playlist where I found Zola Jesus. Um, and uh, that's an alter ego for Nikki, for Nika Rosa Danilova. She's an American singer-songwriter, active since 2009. And uh, her music style, it has like elements of electronic, industrial, classical and goth. It has also been described as art pop. This is quite dark, um, and a lot of sounds, industrial sounds. Um, and uh, but also repetitive uh, ry uh, rhythmic rhythms patterns uh, these two are from an older album from 2011 called Con Conatus Swords and Vessel which I like but most of the tracks from that record I haven't listened to all her work but I listened to this album uh, and found most of the tracks were too uh, the the voice was too loud for me so I prefer these uh, or yeah these two of course since I kept them but I prefer the songs from from her latest album Archon from 2022 these are not all of them but some on the tracks from this album. She is using a lower tone, a lower register from her voice and it's blended with the music, with the, um, all these sounds, landscape, lands sound landscape, um, and uh, yeah, I really like that. They're called Lost, The Fall, Undertow, into the wild fault, ephemera, do that anymore. Those are really good. Also low volume, important, because otherwise maybe you will hear too much of the noise type of sounds that will disturb you. Then, Max Richter. German-born British composer and pianist, and uh, he's been active since uh, 1994, approximately. And his uh, music style can be described as uh, post-minimalist and contemporary classical music style. And uh, this was a huge, ambitious project that he created in 2015 called Sleep. And this was also recommended in the 50 best albums for, for to fall asleep that I found when I was searching. And it's like eight and a half hour listening experience targeted to fit a full night's rest. So it contains uh, 31 compositions includes piano, cello, viola, violin, organ, soprano, vocals, synthesizers, electronics. Uh, the vocals I found a bit um, disturbing actually. <laughs> uh, so I think I have kept maybe one, some, only a couple of them and I uh, but, uh, omit 
selected a lot of the vocal tracks, but there, are, there weren't so many, but they were singing with very high, high register. Um, and this is like, yeah, it, it, it's really good, but almost it's too repetitive for my taste sometimes. It's so long, and uh, you just listen, there are the same patterns on piano going on and on forever, track after track. Uh, and if you don't manage to fall asleep, it's, I get actually a bit bored. But it, I mean, it is effective, and I listen to it sometimes. Um, but I prefer sometimes the other, the other albums that I also found. But it's a very ambitious project and very effective. I guess it can be. So I included these tracks on this playlist, but on YouTube, for example, I I didn't include them because you can. I can also put a link to the playlist from from this actual album that is also on YouTube so so I can I can send you a link to that playlist too if you want to listen and I think also there was some visual art to this project as well I'm just collaborating with visual artists so I can just read the titles here dream one before the wind blows it all away. Several parts here. Cumulonimbus, Dream 2, Pageants, Solo, Aria, Return 2, Nor Earth, Nor Boundless Sea. Dream 11, Whisper Music. That's interesting. Moth like stars. Space 26. Patterns. Looks. Constellation 1, 2. Space 2. Slow waves. Coral glow. Dream 19 Pulse, Pulse. Cassiopeia, Aria 2, Never Fade Into Nothingness, Return 16, Time Capsule, very nice titles. If You Came This Way, Space 17, Chain. Sublunar Dream 17 Alpha Dream 0 To break of day So it's really designed for the entire night Eight and, eight and a half hours Sleep it's Super fascinating project actually Next, I have included some tracks from Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington is a really a legend in jazz music, American jazz pianist based in New York City from the mid 1920s. He became a national profile through his orchestra's appearance at the Cotton Club in Harlem. And um, I listen quite a lot to Duke Ellington's music, uh, and s some of the tracks I have really thought that these are so slow and so soft and so relaxing. But only a few of them, because uh, he's also very energetic. His music can be very energetic with the piano and all the instruments, and very, very, very quick. But then he have he has this uh, really, really slow, calming melodies and songs. For example, Mood Indigo, that's my favorite. It was released in 1930. Really old 
record. And by this time, the music was uh, recorded and sold only on uh, 72, 78 RPM records. And they had a three minute limit. You could only release three minutes of music at one side and then three minutes on the other side. So two, two songs. And Duke Ellington became a master of writing these types of miniatures on songs because when they were performing live I guess the songs could be go on forever uh, jazz musicians love to improvise just extend the songs but on records they had to be three minutes long and uh, he had he said one time at uh, uh, Mur Indigo was the first tune that he wrote especially for the microphone transmission. So he didn't think of the audience, live audience here, he thought about the result on the record. And um, it became a jazz standard, it became a huge hit, I guess, and now it's a jazz standard. And I find it so fun because it's so. It's so slow, it's instrumental, no lyrics, at least I haven't heard the lyrics to it. I guess that maybe there are lyrics to it, but the most famous versions are instrumental. And uh, it's so slow, it's so quiet, it's so soft, and it's, a, it's a, so fun that it became a, like a hit. I don't really see uh, how that happened, but I love it. And. The voicing on this song is um, clarinet, trumpet, and trombone, as usual. Uh, and they are muted, muted trumpets, muted uh, trombone, muted clarinet. Together with the piano, banjo, bass, and drums, as usual, his orchestra did. Um, but yeah, he tried. Uh, a completely new technique on this one because usually uh, the clarinet uh, played a lot of high notes in the, on the top of the sound landscape the trumpet was in the middle uh, and the trombone was at the low, lowest register of those three and they were like that was a typical way of recording and playing those three instruments together but here he let the the clarinet use the lo very lowest part of its register, so really close to the trumpet, and he let the trombone uh, play the highest note it could. So they are like here together, all three instruments. And it created a sound that no one had heard before. Um, and it's like it's the same. You don't really think about what is, oh, there's the clarinet, there's the trombone. You don't really think about that. It's like they're really together like this, creating a really cool um, sound. And uh, that would, that made this song very special and new. And I really love this sound and this song. Um, so, so, so quiet. <laughs> Um, and of course it would be nice to listen to one of the longer versions but I really, I have chosen the, the oldest versions here from like 1930s because I like the sound from those old 78 RPM records it's a lot of white noise in the background because the recording technique wasn't that good by this time so long time ago so you can hear a lot of noise but I, I love the sound from more than the more later recordings from maybe 1940s because he continued to record these songs over and over again different versions through his career then I added some songs from Turid Lindqvist two songs here but also I added two more songs here I can see um, Turid Lindqvist is a Swedish singer songwriter um, and she was uh, uh, famous in the early 1970s or yeah she had her 
breakthrough in the early 1970s. And I'm not sure she's making so much music anymore, uh, but yeah, she did a lot in the 1970s. And she did progressive rock rock acts. Um, and she was signed to the famous in Sweden, uh, maybe also in outside Sweden, the progressive, progressive record company Silence. It was founded in 1970 and they did a lot of records that has become legendary. Um, for example, a record in 1971 uh, by the band Philemon Arthur and the Dunn. It's uh, like a lot of myths around this album and about this group because they got the, the prize for best records in 1971 and it was a huge scandal in the music industry because this was progressive rock, it was something completely new. It was not like recorded in a proper studio or anything. It was like not um, the type of, not the traditional type of music or traditional pop music. Um, and it was, um, it's always been a mystery who this duo was. And still today, it's not clear who, who was this the members of this duo, Film and Arthur and the Town. Yeah, I find that quite fascinating. But I haven't included their music here because it's not so relaxing <laughs> in any way, I think. Um, but Turid, Turid's uh, so, uh, debut album from 1971 called the Litras Visur. Um, some of these songs I heard for the first time quite recently. And Maybe I got a recommendation to listen to this song a while ago. I don't know why I started to listen to it. I think someone told me on a comment or... Um, but it's really good. This is in Swedish and it's really good. Uh, calming, relaxing, to help you sleep. It's a vagvisa. That's a s Swedish word for songs to put you to sleep, actually. And then I found uh, some songs in English also that were also quite relaxing. Mm. And she's actually singing in high pitch, um, so I was not totally sure I could include them, but actually I... I find it okay to listen to. I mean, I find it okay. It, it's it's very nice, um, and it's not disturbing to me, even though it's a bit high, higher notes. And she's also singing in a, in a very Swedish. Is she singing English in a very Swedish accent? So if you like the way I speak uh, English with a Swedish accent, you might like her her English lyrics, songs in English too, because you can actually hear the. Swedish accent there. Then I have added some songs that I got um, recommended automatically after listening to, I don't remember which song I had been listening to, maybe I had been listening to Turid's songs and I maybe fall as fell asleep and then it just continued to play some songs and I was waking up and like, oh, this was really good, I have to check out what is it. I have to add it to my list. For example, Bridget St. John. I like to be with you in the sun and fly high. Um, these are from her debut album, Ask Me No Questions, from 1969. And I hadn't heard about her before, but she's an English singer-songwriter, best known from her were her three first albums, 1969 to 1972. And uh, it's her, she also has a very low voice, low, singing in lower notes and playing the guitar um, using the, this uh, arpeggio, arpeggiation technique, finger plucking on the strings. Uh, really, I find it really, really nice, the sound with her voice together with this 
way of playing the guitar. It's very monotonous, repetitious here. And then I remember I got a suggestion from someone. I think it must have been when I was releasing a video about uh, Fado music very long time ago, when I had been to Lisbon for some time. I started to listen to some Fado music. Also, I will not include Fado music on this playlist because it's very strong uh, singing, uh, not um, suitable for falling asleep, at least not for me. Loud sing, loud uh, singing on top of the, on the music. But then I got a recommendation from someone through, I think it was through the channel actually, or a comment or something, that I could listen to um, Kora music. And I did, and but then I hadn't listened to Kora music for the cartoon time, but then when I, when I was thinking about this playlist, I, I recalled this, and yeah, maybe I should look for some Kora again. And it's actually nice, uh, quite energetic actually, here it's a string instrument called Kora, used in Western Africa. Uh, especially in Mali. Um, it has 21 strings and it's made from a gourd, uh, like a long melon uh, and a long hardwood neck. And you're plucking with your fingers like this. And very, they're very like, quick. Uh, so it's, a, it's quite energetic. But uh, even though it's energetic, it's like after a while you you just it just floats together and you um, I at least find it relaxing the whole sound landscape it creates so it's instrumental music but very rhythmic and you find patterns and uh, you get these repetitions that I, I really enjoy and then I found Tomani Diabate who had uh, creates music or play music in this genre, active since 1987. He's from Mali, and he's also involved in cross-cultural collabs like flamenco style, blues and jazz music styles. These songs are picked from an album from 2008, the Mandé Variation. They are really nice. And uh, the last ones here are more songs that I got recommended that just uh, kept playing after I had listened to something and felt fallen asleep. This like continued playing and I was like, oh, these are really good. But I don't know too much about this artist. Hidden Sea, a track by Seus. Seus. It's a uh, two brothers, Sebastian and Daniel Selke, based in Berlin, a cello piano duo. Ben Lucas Boysen, with the track Only in the Dark, from his album from 2013 called Gravity. This is really relaxing, actually, very, very slow and calm, quiet. Really good track, but I, know, I don't know much more about him. Also from Berlin, I think, uh, electronic music composer. And then uh, Beth Gibbons and Rustin Mann are the artists for this track, Sand River. And this was interesting. I, d I didn't recognize these names, but actually Beth Gibbons was the former singer of Portishead since 1991. Rustin Mann is uh, alter ego for um, uh, Paul Webb, the former bassist in Talk Talk since uh, 1981. And they uh, started this uh, music project together in 2002. They released a folk and jazz inspired album called Out of Season. And I really like this song. I haven't listened to more of the songs because uh, this is this is just the one that I that, that uh, I got this recommended. But maybe there are more of them. Really good. I should listen more. 
when it comes to this, I should listen and uh, explore this artist a bit more, I think. Then we have this song, I Talk to the Wind, by, performed here by Dana Gavansky. Dana Gavansky is a Canadian singer-songwriter, has been active since 2017. By the way, Beth Gibbons and Rustin Mann were English. Um, but yeah, Dana Gavansky uh, makes music in indie, folk, pop, art rock, guitar. She's playing guitar. Um, and I Talk to the Wind is actually a cover song. Um, it's from 1969 by the artist uh, King Crimson from Ken Crimson's debut album In the Court of the Crimson King uh, and I hadn't heard that song before so but when I figured out it was a cover song I listened to the original too and it yeah it was nice but I find this one better for the relaxation purpose to fall asleep to but uh, yeah King Crimson is an English Progressive rock artist. And then there are two songs from Sagor och Swing. That's Swedish. Swedish duo. An instrumental duo formed in 1999. Uh, the members are Erik Malmberg, Hammond organ and synthesizer. Ulf Möller plays the drum. And they, yeah, they formed in 1999, and they made some albums uh, here in the beginning of 2000s. Oriel Färje in 2001, Melodier och Fåglar from 2002, where these uh, tracks are picked from. They do jazz, electronic music, Scandinavian folk music, combine everything. Very nice mix. I'm not sure if they are doing music uh, right now, maybe this was a project 20 years ago, or if they maybe continue doing it, I have to check. Maybe they have done, been involved in other music projects, that also could be interesting to check out. And then, um, uh, more two or two, two read songs, and last, I... I have added three tracks by Naima Valin, and I don't know much about Naima Valin. I just got this recommended sometime, and um, they're really good. This is actually ambient music. It's described as ambient music for study, deep relaxation, and sleep. It's very slow piano music, very instrumental. More like the type of music you might think of or when you like search for relaxation music you find these types of music but this actually I like because they're very calm and no no like high sounds that are disturbing for me they're very short tracks though um, I don't know why she creates tracks that is only like three minutes long <laughs> it's like she she has this uh, 78 rpm limit to think about um, uh, it almost looks like that because uh, I mean this uh, type of music would be so nice if it could be uh, several several minutes so you can have it in the background fall asleep to it but yeah if I found three songs that I really like so together at least they make nine ten minutes so I guess it's enough enough to relax and fall asleep to Yeah, that was my list, um, and it consists now of 200 tracks, uh, only this Max Richter Sleep album, and then some additional 120 or 130 tracks that I have collected. other artists.
paste. I can just quickly show it, show you on YouTube as well. Here it is, sleep relax, 123 videos. I think I found most of them, but not all of them on YouTube. didn't include the Max Richter sleep here because there are so many songs just in that playlist. That one I can put the link to that playlist as well that you can find on another channel, on probably Max Richter's channel or something. So. so much for watching. It was fun to show you this playlist. I hope you find some songs. If you're looking for music that you can relax to, I hope you find some inspiration here. And uh, yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts and your recommendations and what you think about some of the songs that I have mentioned here, maybe. If you know where I can find other nice relaxing songs. So sleep well.